What's up, family? What's up? It's good to see you guys. Welcome to the Real Estate Podcast on Hitman Radio. And we are now um, looking for this great opportunity for our show. I'm your co-host, Melvin Dickens, along with my host, Al Davis. And we have an exciting show for you today. But first of all, uh, we want you to follow us on all social media platforms. Please go to YouTube and subscribe. Subscribe and watch us, like us. We're also on uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and on Instagram at the estate underscore uh, podcast. So look, please join us on all these platforms. And we have an awesome show for you today. Uh, we have Miss Teresa Stevens yes. uh, from Baltimore City Department of Housing the Development Division. And she brings a plethora of information and knowledge uh, uh, to, to this real estate conversation today. So we're so excited to have her here because she has a wealth of knowledge. Uh, her resume speaks for us, so we're not going to go into all of that. But we're going to jump right in and get started. Then we got to shout out our hand radio family, King Richard Good. Uh, we welcome you. Thank you, the producer behind us, uh, the, the wheels are still doing everything, producing, camera, uh, lights, camera action is running everything. So we're great to be back with you today. And radio. And radio family. And uh, please check us out on uh, YouTube, The Day in the Life. The Day in the Life was uh, our last. Uh, we did a, a vlog where they just followed us all day long. You see everything that me and Al did in terms of a whole day of real estate. So we're going to jump right into it and get started. So Al, I'll, I'll turn it to get over to you to kind of get started with Mr. Teresa and go from there. Okay, great. Well, first of all, I'm really excited about this show. And the person that I'm going to introduce and we get ready to speak to has a lot of information because I deal with a lot of investors. I got like 1,500 clients around the country and everybody wants to get into Baltimore and everybody wants to figure out how they can buy properties in Baltimore, even city blocks. But the person, the go-to person in the whole city is this young lady, Ms. Teresa Stevenson. So welcome, Teresa. Good morning. Thank you so much, you all, for inviting me to participate in this event. And it's our honor. I'm, I'm going to start it off because I know the show is long. I got so many questions. But the number one question is that everybody's asking me is how do they go about buying properties in Baltimore City, even even city blocks if they want to get city blocks, and what are the criteria that you guys look for for someone to buy property, some of these vacant properties in Baltimore City, and how do they go about it? Right. So Baltimore City Department of Housing and Community Development, um, the Development Division has been marketing and processing applications to purchase city owned properties for more than 10 years now. And um, pretty much what we're looking for from investors, developers, home buyers is the ability to transform these vacant properties into a productive use. Rental, home ownership, commercial, um, all of the different uses are available. So part of the criteria um, at this point is for every application for a property, um, the applicant must show $90,000 per property available to renovate. Um, that is a low number, so we do encourage persons to do an inspection of the property to understand what type of investment is necessary to get the property um, into a productive use. So would they, they, okay, so would they ride around the city and if they see vacant properties, would they research the addresses? And if they find out that the city owns it, then they will contact your office? If the city is the owner, yes. The best place to start is with uh, the development division with housing. Um, one of the things that isn't said a lot because there are a high number of vacant properties in Baltimore City is that Baltimore City government does not own all of these properties. We probably are about 15% or less um, a owner of the vacants that are in Baltimore City. So working with our office, um, visiting our website, which is buyintobemore.baltimorecity.gov or Baltimore City Department of Housing and Community Development's website, you can find a map which will identify the different properties that the city has available for purchase. Okay, so they have to show 90,000 before you scrape up the 90 Gs before you call okay. Teresa to be sure. Uh, if you don't have it, find somebody you can partner with, or like a mentor or a family member or something like that. But you can get these properties. And the goal, the goal is to alleviate most of the vacants, as many vacants as possible in the city, right? Absolutely. And get Absolutely. those properties back on the tax roll. And it's an opportunity because I'm sure you can buy some of these vacant properties below market. Most of them below market, right? Yeah. So with the city, um, we definitely are doing uh, comps. So we try to get an idea of what the properties are valued at. 
However, the biggest focal point for anyone interested in purchasing city-owned property is understanding the, the dynamics of renovating. Um, our team, we wear rose-colored glasses so we can see the historic character of the property and you know, most people that are riding down say, oh my goodness, that could really be a great property. But going inside and seeing if it's, you know, has a roof, does it right. have plumbing, right. does it have an electrical system, are there floors? Right. Those are some key inspections that we encourage people to do instead of just looking at the property itself, understanding what is necessary to get the property back. So, absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome, Ms. Keith, because that's actually part of the mental program that we have here with Sky Miles. You know, we actually um, bring uh, folks who are interested in real estate in, and that's what they do. One of the things we do a ride along is we actually get in the pickup um, with Davis and myself, and they can see everything. They see you know, how to assess a property, how to tell if, if anything's been updated, the wall lines been updated, the whole nine yards, if it needs a roof, if it needs new windows, because all of that's part of for the rehab budget and part of your investment. I think that's critical because even when you have money, $90,000 is a significant amount of money, but then it's not a lot. Sometimes it's some of the rehabs can be up to $150,000 depending on if the building has been neglected for a significant amount of time. I would think um, in most cases, some of the city properties may be in a bit better shape simply because they've been boarded up or they've been secured. And some of the other properties we've encountered just have not been even secured. So they've been you know, susceptible to the weather. Uh, and all yes. Yeah. Can you speak on how important it is, and this is just my thought, how important is it to be an investor trying to come to Baltimore, to align yourself with someone who always either has the experience in Baltimore, or has relationships, and can actually do the work. Like if they see a vacant property, it may not have a roof or whatever. Like, like say we have our contractors license and we've done over 200 properties in Baltimore, so we're pretty familiar with the landscape. But should they align themselves with somebody in Baltimore or just come here like cold turkey and just try to figure it out? What are, what are your suggestions that they do? Absolutely align themselves. But I would say before you partner, research, you know, understand Baltimore and our character. Um, Baltimore has more than 220 neighborhoods. So each of those oh. neighborhoods has a different personality, yes. has a different need. Um, and I think understanding Baltimore before you decide to come into the real estate market is key. Um, but definitely finding persons that have the experience, um, the qualified experience to finish projects is really um, going to be important for folks. And the resources that are available through Baltimore City Department of Housing and Community Development maps, through Live Baltimore, through organizations like your own, that can really give people real life conversation about what it looks like to purchase and renovate a vacant. Yes. So, Mr. Reese, we kind of jumped right in because we were so excited. <laughs> and we didn't even give you an opportunity to tell a little bit about yourself and your okay. background in terms of your experience. Our, I mean, we you know what it comes from. This is not an interview per se, yeah. but just for folks who may not know, um, um, because I think at times, particularly in city, uh, there are some powerhouses like yourself that are behind the scenes that may not be in front, but you certainly keep them in Go through the Tell us a little bit about like your career, your experience at housing. And definitely. Well, in I place. appreciate that. Um, and I would say that it's definitely a team. Um, I work with a great team at housing. Um, I am a native Baltimorean. Uh, graduate of Douglas High School, not too far from here. And yes, um, I'm, okay. yes, that's all the way. And um, pursued college at West Virginia State. So I've been in, I came back to Baltimore. Um, it was cheaper actually to rent from my dad than to buy a new house at the time after graduating college. But, you know, Baltimore, the history of this city is absolutely amazing. And the character of the buildings that we have is absolutely amazing. So as part of my journey in my career, um, I've worked in promoting Baltimore City, both with Live Baltimore as their marketing director and with the Greater Baltimore Board of Realtors as their communications director, and now as a director of neighborhood development outreach with housing and community development. I feel like it's kind of I've skipped the realtor and the investor role and stayed in this position of actually promoting and encouraging people to consider this great city. Well, I'm glad that you did that. I'm I, part I, of what I, <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I think, because I, you know, I wanted you to say that, and I appreciate you sharing that because I think sometimes 
time, you know, and I'm, I'll be honest, you know, there's always not a good experience for some people with some parts of city government in terms of, you know, just sometimes the red tape and the bureaucracy of how you get the process and so on. And I know that they're working on that. One of the things I want to ask, I know we have a relatively new housing commissioner, yeah. whom I've had opportunity to be in Director Kennedy's presence several times, and uh, sort of in encouraged and enlightened about um, her vision. Um, what do you see in terms of housing, like trends and things that are going on in your department, is coming from the commissioner, and you know, even other plans like vacant to value and some of the programs or initiatives that they are um, looking to develop? What do you see as sort of trends in Baltimore going forward? Well, I'm excited to have Commissioner uh, Alice Kennedy leading our team. Um, she understands both the people portion of Baltimore and the need, as well as the development opportunity um, that is available in Baltimore City. There's a framework currently that focuses to make an impact in neighborhoods that are really struggling, that are distressed as far as high numbers of vacant properties. And those impact investment areas are areas where all of the agencies are pooling their resources and working as a team to really focus on eliminating blight. And that initiative, I think, is critical um, because you can change housing, but without sanitation and without police and without health and education, those things really tie to one another. You know, someone wants to sell or rent a property because of its proximity to a good school or, you know, a place to work. So those things are critical. So I'm really excited that we are continuing to uh, focus on uh, a joint agency effort. And um, definitely, definitely Commissioner Kennedy is continuing that uh, push to do. And our team with code enforcement, with uh, neighborhood development, with home ownership resources is doing a really great job to not spread us so thin, but focus on the area, get that area established, and continue to spread the stability around the city. I Go ahead. No, no, and, and that's awesome information because that gives that lends to the direction that the city is going. And what what's been an issue with me and been discouraging in the past is is the turnover. Like I've I've been through Raja Kano, Braverman, all the, and I had to meet with each one to try to get stuff done. The good thing about Teresa is that, well, first of all, she always returns my calls, always returns my emails. And she's easy to communicate with, and you can get things done with her. Right. And I like Miss Kennedy. I like her vision and everything. So she's a very nice young lady. So I think that the city has made a lot of strides in order to better their business relationships with people that's investing in the community. So that's one thing that I'm very encouraged about going forward. Um, we, yeah, I've been talking to you a lot the last six months, haven't we? We have, yeah. <laughs> and I want to, because um, I can't talk about the block, right? You can. Okay. 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 So I'm talking about the, no, because we, I built a relationship with the city, and I don't really tell nobody other than I'm in a circle about this, but we was able to work with Ms. Teresa to secure um, two blocks in Baltimore. So we're going to be developing that. Then we're going to put like 38. We, re, we redid it, and it's going to be like 36 now. I was in there, so a brand new development coming up. And it was a it process. To get to the process was hard because of the previous administrations, but this administration made it so easy, and you work with me so easy that I, I'm just proud to be working with you guys. It's a great opportunity for us to enhance home ownership in the city, right? Put houses back on the tax roll, and, and I want to thank you for that. And we're gonna work hard to make sure that it's easier for other investors to come in and do the same thing. Yeah, what's awesome about that process, I think, is, and this is sort of my bailiwick. Um, you know, I've been a community organizer. Um, several organizations I'm even doing that work although I step a lot of it more of an administrative role now um, to watch Baltimore but the community was a part of that process mm -hmm. which I thought was invaluable yes. um, they actually interviewed us um, consequently since we've been in the neighborhood Al and I they came up and introduced themselves so we in fact they were a couple of people were telling us about other properties that's in the neighborhood that we yeah. might want to acquire so you build a rapport yeah. um, and I think that, that, that process, um, that RP process, I think is good. I hope um, that that process continues because I think um, having the community by it, I think, um, is, is critical. You know, being an organizer by trade, I think oftentimes the community that have uh, not, that have not been invested in this heavily, for whatever reason, um, we, we tend to 
okay, you don't have any resources, so we'll just put something there. And I think, well, who said that we wanted apartments or who said that we wanted for, um, a school or um, another shopping mall? Maybe we wanted a, a park or something like that. So I think that was, I really um, was um, sort of encouraged by that process and participating in that. Although I know with Zoom, you know, because of you know, the nature of the time that we're going on, but it still gave us an opportunity to folks to see a space that they, they, they can ask us questions directly and say what they wanted. They wanted a project that was going to drive home ownership of the community. They didn't want um, a more, um, another apartment building. Well, Al can speak to this, but we both know raise my children. You know, so you might find a good neighborhood to save um, within the city, but then it's like, you know, where, where am I going to send my kids to school? So those, all of those things that I think, to your point, make sense, how we look at development. And, um, and also, you know, I think doing quality development, yes. you know, quality um, um, rehabs, you know, quality um, building, um, yes. doing something, um, not necessarily just to code per se, mm -hmm. um, but doing something to quality. Um, one of the things I like about every, pretty much every house that I've been in, I would live in myself. So, That's you know, important. Just and just to address your point about community, it really has been a part of Department of Housing and Community Development. The voice of the people, not always just the organizations, but the people are very, it's very important because that's who sells the rest of your block. That's who sells the, you know, the community is the folks who actually live there. So that is extremely important. So I'm really glad that you enjoyed that presentation. That can be intimidating because sometimes communities, you know, they come from We've lived here, we've had this vacancy around us for so long, we're ready for change. Right. And the developer may not always have that perspective. Right. Sometimes right. there's still fundraising, it's gonna take a little time to get right. started. Right. So understanding each other, the community and the developer is a really key key to yeah. success. Yeah, it's important. Well, speaking of the community, when, when I said on my Instagram, I sent out that you're gonna be here, people start calling me and one of them, Frequent, I think like several people call it, it's like, ask what's the hot areas in Baltimore. So <laughs> before you get to that, are there any things coming up from the city, or like an area or RFP or something that's coming up that, that um, you think might be a good opportunity for an investor to, to, to look at? Uh, so your last question, we do have a request for proposal that is out available now. Um, our fall 2022 request for proposal includes uh, nine different sites throughout oh. the city. Um, in those sites are surplus school buildings, there are bundles of vacant lots, there are bundles of vacant buildings, and we are entertaining proposals. I think the deadline is November the 14th okay. for folks to um, learn about it, investigate it, and put a proposal together um, for the city to purchase those um, those bundles of property. Do they go to BaltimoreCity.gov or what website they go to find They that? go, thank you, they go to Balt buy into Balt buy into be more at BaltimoreCity.gov. Okay, yeah. so you, you got schools, vacant lots. So vacant lots, they put houses on, it might be so commercial, put something there. Yeah. But schools, what I'm seeing, in, what I'm seeing a lot in Baltimore is people are turning schools into maybe law apartments and mm -hmm. different things like that or commercial zones. Can build, you can be creative. The schools do give a lot of options and so do the vacant lots. So we're looking for professionals that are ready to develop housing, urban agricultural businesses, aquaponics, uh, farms, et cetera, that could be in the city. So schools, vacant lots, bundles of buildings, we are, you know, we have a good opportunity in the city for, of Baltimore. All right, I might want to get a meeting with you and everybody to talk about those vacant lots for sure. Sounds good. So, and, um, Your first question. Yes. Um, I would say, um, Government is not the private market. So there are processes that the government is mandated to, to take in order to accept and sell a property that it owns. So it is not as simple or short a window um, as if you were to work with a realtor or do this private purchase. Um, one suggestion I have um, is one to meet organizations that are familiar with the city as you referenced earlier and also um, be prepared. Okay. Either come ready to interview us to ask questions so that you can get prepared, or when you are presenting your proposal, know where your funding is coming from. Know who your architect is, have an idea of what type of use you're gonna do, how many apartments. 
Um, the Baltimore City Department of Planning offers a service where when you're close to submitting your proposal, you can meet with them for pre-development workshop. So you can understand how many parking spaces do I need if I'm doing a multifamily unit? Um, what type, how high can I build if I'm doing new construction? Okay. So there are resources there to help the interested applicant come in ready. Oh, and right. coming in ready shortens that window yeah. of red tape. Oh, your research, so yeah. Or the exactly. long process that a lot of folks make. Wow. That's really good to hear because I didn't know about all those resources you guys had. And, and another thing is like, you're on the show now, but you have a team. Yes. I want everybody to know you have a team. Yes. I mean, you, you definitely try to catch Teresa, but she has a team. So if you can't catch her, because she's a hard petition, she has a team that can answer every question that she can answer. Am I right? Absolutely. There's a neighbor. So we are the Department of Neighborhood Development and Outreach. Okay. And there are five neighborhood development officers. And each of those neighborhood development officers represent a particular district of the city. So okay. yes, Nikki Cooper would be awesome Love for the me. east area. Howard Tutman handles Howard. the central area. Um, Kelly Bacala is okay. northwest, and she's mm -hmm. now helping us out in the northeast area. And Robin and Yelly is our southern area. So neighborhoods like Brooklyn, Franklin Town, those south Baltimore um, neighborhoods. So, um, and I have to give a shout out to Danielle. Reynolds, who is our administrative support, and she is amazing. So you probably will talk to her first, and then she will connect you with one of us. So we have to take a quick break, but uh, when we come back, uh, Ms. Teresa, we want to talk about a little bit maybe you know, the process of applying properly for the receivership and the in-run process. I know the city is going to go through some, maybe some transition about tweaking that. So we're going to take a minute to pay the bills. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Real Estate Podcast, we'll be back in a few minutes get into that today. But um, when you said the city only has 15%, one of the things I know that people have been getting properly, they're trying to buy properties through receivership. And I know that process um, takes, can be arduous, right? It can take up to maybe a couple of years, I think, in some cases. So I want you to touch on that a little bit, like for investors who may have a property that we require with you, or just you know, through our own private acquisition, but then they may be an adjacent property. Um, that is probably something um, that, you know, obviously in some cases um, um, has, has been neglected and you might want to acquire that asset you know, to be able to improve our asset. That's a great question. Um, so uh, the team includes code enforcement. And code enforcement's role um, generally, and they would be best to dive deep, um, is to help us uh, I put some attention on those vacants that are just sitting there. So the process is those uh, properties are cited. There's a $900 citation that the vacant property owner would receive, which is pretty much notification, hey, we are doing something in this community. Let's do something with your property too. Are you interested in selling it, renting it, renovating it, doing something so that it just is not a continuous blight on the block? Um, once the receivership process has happened, which is three $900 citations, notification to the property owner, and then possibly court, those properties move into receivership. And mm -hmm. the receiver for the city of Baltimore is one house at a time. Right. They host auctions, um, I believe twice a month or monthly. Um, and in the, the auction are the properties that have, the city has pushed into public auction to help to stabilize the block. Um, so that does take about 12 to 18 months um, to go through that entire process because it, it really isn't the city's intention to take someone's property that they truly want to maintain, but it is the city's intention to try to eliminate blight. And if you're holding on to a property, in some cases for 20, 30 years as a vacant, maybe this isn't what you want to do as far as bringing that property back into a use that's, that's needed in the community. Wow, that's an interesting um, process. Yeah, I, so, and I know, um, I think um, that the NREM is something that they've been talking about, mm -hmm. which is supposed to shorten that process. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I know they haven't touched it out. I know that I think the city council is wrestling with that. I think that's something that's being sponsored by Thompson. Yes. yes. Um, Ramos, and I don't want to put you in a political discussion. No, but NREM is a tool yeah. that will help the city shorten that time frame right. of acquiring a property or 
moving the property into a state where someone who's qualified right. can purchase it and get it back into some type of productive use. For folks, like for instance, you know, I know a lot of times in Baltimore where this happens is this is grandma's house, this is auntie's house. She's maybe transitioned to live with other family or perhaps a nursing facility or, you know, in some cases, you know, no longer with us. And then maybe the family's not interested. They moved to the suburbs and moved out of state. And so then you have this property that's kind of sitting here. Mm -hmm. um, but what would, if other resources that the city has for someone who says, you know, I might want to preserve my mother's my house. Um, one of our um, colleagues, um, um, it's it interesting, she made a Baltimore to move back from Atlanta mm -hmm. and bought her grandmother's house or her aunt's house because awesome. she wants to rebuy the block and you know, she's in development too and stuff. So, but the interesting thing about it is that's a, it's a great story, I think, for, for mm -hmm. us to go back and acquire those properties because we have a history, talk about history. But for folks who don't have the resources, right? You know, I'm working, maybe I'm making, you know, I'm making a decent salary, but I don't have an extra $90,000 yeah. or what have you. Or maybe I don't even have the credit or want to leverage my credit that way, but I do want to invest in the product. Are there any resources um, that you may have for people? That like is that? a popular question. And there, every neighborhood has um, uh, opportunity. So there are some neighborhoods that um, have investor assistance. So in those areas near schools that may have just been renovated, the Inspire schools, there could be an opportunity for a developer to get, you know, a subsidy to help keep the cost down on the renovation of the property or the sale of the property or rental of the property. Um, but there are no grants currently that I'm aware of for investors. Um, I think you and uh, Al talked about partnership, and I think those families that own properties that don't have the resources need to really seek out. Or there could be a resource that is put before them um, via an email or mailing to that vacant property owner that says, hey, we can help you um, to, to get this property in some type of a use. Emotions are typically how family perceives family, those, those vacant properties. Yeah, yeah. And the developer piece is that professional piece that comes in and says, hey, this is what we can do. Yeah. Um, but for resources for property owners that are trying to renovate their homes, um, there are some, but they are very limited um, by area. So I would definitely say the recommendation would be partnership with um, lenders or experienced developers. So another question I had, well, I want to go back. You said RFP earlier. A lot of people might not know what an RFP is. So that's that. And then the second question I had, is if I do purchase one of these city-owned properties, mm -hmm. do you all have, once I'm finished the renovation, stage the house and everything and ready to put on the market, do you guys have resources that can help me get rid of the house at the end, like the trolley tour? Is, is there some, some program you guys have that can help me sell the house at the end of the renovation once I'm working with you guys? So there, when the property, so when we sell the property, um, most land disposition agreements, um, require 12 months to get the property a use and occupancy certificate. Once you've got that use and occupancy certificate and you're ready to sell or rent, there are incentives that the city has to help first time home buyers. Um, there's the Vacants to Value Booster Grant, which gives $10,000 toward closing costs for buyers. There are also neighborhoods who have development going on and they have assistance to help people who live in, it's live near your worship, live near your work, um, you know, those types of incentives to help the end user. So the home buyer would be able to get that type of uh, assistance. Yeah, I didn't know about any of those programs. So once I fix the house up, I can come back to your office and try to find resources to try to Absolutely. find people to purchase the property. So that's good. So they help you find the well, house. Well, we wouldn't help find the person to purchase it, but we but would provide that incentive. Okay. For your marketing direction. team, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, I know it's, we're trying with Capital Heights to see us come in to do work with partners in the University of Georgia Living and Work Program. That's awesome. Um, and uh, hopefully that'll, because, you know, so I know Hopkins has it, and um, I think University of Maryland has it as well. Folks who work there can get money to buy and purchase um, um, from that organization and really put, put some money into the pocket and get that under the other programs. Um, I wanted to, um, because we talk about in and we talk about receivership, 
Um, and, and I know you said the advertising, because that's one of the things, you know, you see when we buy houses. Um, and I know being in this business myself, that the competition is fierce, um, because Baltimore is a hot market. Yeah. You know? But one of the things that kind of concerns me is that everybody doesn't do business um, with a certain level of, of moral and truth, right? Um, and so, you know, because if I'm, you know, if I'm a nephew and I'm, I got my aunt's house and somebody sends me this thing, I don't know how to decipher if this guy is an investor or if he's a wholesaler, he can really sell my house. What, you know, because I think it's so much of it going on. And so is there anything that the city has, that you have in your division, like that, say, we looking up certain investors or looking up certain businesses that we can say, hey, for instance, okay, so we have Scott Miles. It's all kind of those guys do good work. They deliver it from X amount of properties. But then maybe somebody who doesn't have that track record. And I'm not trying to take anybody's business away from them, but I guess what I'm saying is for somebody who has a property who may want to get it developed, how do I know when I get this pamphlet in my mail or this phone call, this this cold email, if this is a, is it, and I know you say you probably got to do our research, but mm -hmm. is there anything, a tool that the city has that says, hey, these are some good folks. Um, they're doing good business, um, and you might want to talk to them. Um, we can't. The city cannot provide a okay. recommendation okay. or a reference. Okay. Um, what can be a helpful resource are the neighborhood development officers who okay. are working in the neighborhood. So, if you're interested in something in Broadway East, which is an awesome community. Um, and someone approaches you about purchasing, one Broadway East has a community development corporation that you can reach out to and say, hey, have you heard of? Um, the other thing is you can reach out to Nikki Cooper to say, Nikki, this developer or this investor has reached out to us. We're thinking about selling our house. Can you tell us if they've done anything? And we can share that detail, but we wouldn't be able to give you, you know, pro, you know pros and cons about any particular, but that's a really good business for someone. <laughs> Yeah, because I'm just thinking about that in terms of, I see it so much, you ride around, you see the lawn signs, you get put in the media, go buy your house, real one. one. I'll never forget when I moved, um, and uh, I'll tell my little story real quick, I thought that some of them were forced out of the because I, I couldn't afford to send my kids uh, to school, to school was good where I was living. I was living in the Bel Air Edison neighborhood, and we had the house on the My first home, and you know, with the schools, but I was struggling with that, and so, outside of the city, but I couldn't find anything that I could afford. I had a lot of family. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the, um, the, the things that I think is interesting to talk about that, and then we go back to the, we talk about the resources and amenities mm -hmm. of the city, but I remember um, a gentleman um, from Southern Maryland had purchased a house in Windsor Hill and he was going to to purchase that house. Um, and um, but there were some, some, some kind of issues, some issues why we couldn't yeah. even deal with. But uh, to my point, I just wanted to say that I think folks who do good business, you know, to figure out how we can help people in that process. Because, um, so I, I, I guess you said, and those folks are in your office, right? The neighborhood development office. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think it's someone's thing about coming to the city, you just become a research. Like she said, you have to do your research and get your team together. I think if you go to Teresa, correct me if I'm wrong, if you go to Teresa and have all your ducks in a row, like, you have your contract, it's like you have your contractor, you identify the properties with the city and all that. So you want to have to answer the questions and, and, and tell you what the next process is, but people need to put their team together. If you don't know a contractor, you have to probably interview them. You can ask Teresa if they've done business with them before and just try to fill out, and, and, and once they do their research, they can make a better decision, I would think, right? Yeah, absolutely. But you can direct people in the right direction, like with resources to go to in the city to answer the questions, right? the, the neighborhood development team can tell the interested buyer what's happening in the community. Okay. And I think that's, that's important it. because so. to your point about the sign being up, just because a family is selling it to someone, and this is more for the investor, buying it quick, and thinking that you've acquired something for $500 is all, is not always the best move because if that $500 property is sitting in a block of vacants, code enforcement is focused on that block. So unless you are prepared to renovate more than just what you purchased, it pretty much is not a good sale. So we're starting to see um, inexperienced investors just 
quickly, I'm just going to grab this because the price is right. right. But what they need to focus on is where is this property located? Is it adjacent to a privately owned vacant that I may never acquire? Right. Um, or crazy. is it, uh, you know, next to a property who it's owned and I know the owner, but the, the, the roof is caving in. And in order for me to fix my house, they've got to do something to their property as well. So it's important to understand where the property is and not focus so much on the quick purchase. Understand the outcome of the full block. Yeah, I think that's um, that's that's good advice because, um, you know, sometimes it looks good, it looks easy. I think I've, we've, yes. <laughs> we've watched some people have, um, jump in. <laughs> Like diving the water, sort of like when you get to the swimming pool, and some of us maybe put our little thing in, our little toe in, but then you get up to your ankle, then you get up to your knee before you get in. And some people just dive in, and I've seen people kind of dive in, and then they, they lose a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, they can recover because it's a learning experience, yeah. but we've seen that happen. And I think you know, both your points, both your research is good. I, I wanted to ask it about the city because I think, you know, in some of the work I've done in other areas, the city has been a pretty decent partner. Mm -hmm. And trying to help, but what what other ways that other um, investors could we could just be part of? Say, I know you said the RFP, but yep. what other ways? What, what does RFP mean? Mm -hmm. oh, so, so the RFP is uh, a request for proposals, and it is a formal, um, more weighted request where the city is looking for who's your team, what's your interest, what is your timeline, what is your budget. Um, and it really is a package that helps us understand the reality of this project happening. So the request for proposal is one opportunity. Um, the expression of interest, which is typically held in the spring, is another opportunity, a little bit lighter weight as far as requirements to submit, um, but it is to gauge the market. Is someone really ready to purchase the entire 500 block of North Gilmore Street? Right. Um, do they have the capacity and is this something we should move to a request for proposal. Um, another way is through our website, which is open bid. So you can go to our website, um, buy into be more at baltimorecity.gov, um, select that you're looking for either land or building. It'll pull up what is available for purchase at that time. And um, you can do a site inspection, and then you would submit your application to purchase. Um, so those are typically for persons that are looking to do nine or less properties at once. Um, but the city, while we are open and we are encouraging of investors, we really want that investor to take this seriously. Yes. Um, you know, as a partner in housing and community development, there is community that relies on the elected officials, on the agency leads, to make certain that the people who are purchasing are truly ready to get this property done and not just hold on to it. So make sure you, you guys, if you listen, make sure you have your ducks in order. And, and the community, I think another thing I heard you say, is the community is vital, it's very important Absolutely. in the decision making. So you guys have to build a relationship and everything's about relationship. Like this is, this her being here is based on my relationship with her. So I, I can't stress enough how important, and I talk about it every podcast, how important relationships are. Yeah. We was able to build a good relationship with the city. I got to know every commissioner that came in there. So. When you try to do a, a project, make sure the community is on your side. And like we have a we have a whole community division, like the mayor is in charge of. So we go and make sure we meet with the community and, and try to, to help understand what they need in that community. So if you don't have that on your team on your side, you're gonna be at a disadvantage. So that's very important. Am, am I right or am I wrong? You're the right. community, yeah. So you're right. I, that's probably the, that's probably the number one thing because if the, the city's gonna go with what the community wants, so. If you think you're gonna put a 20-story apartment building in a com in a residential area, and the community doesn't want it, but it's not gonna happen. Well, I wouldn't say that it's not gonna happen. I, I, I want to say just to clear, the it community is is a partner with housing. Yes. So the hope is that we can all agree on use. Okay. And the hope is that they respect and understand this development team that's coming on board. But we really are looking for a positive outcome for the neighborhood. So yes, community is a key part of the review process, um, but it is part of the re review process okay. and um, doesn't wait solely on that vote, but it definitely is a huge in 
influence on the decision. So you all done projects before where the community didn't want it, but the developer wanted to do it, so you guys did what the developer wanted, even though the community didn't want it? That I recall it may have started that way, okay. and then the developer and the community worked so together okay. to address what the concerns of the community oh. were and what their objections were so that there was a happy medium. Okay. Yeah, I, it's funny. I, I'm glad I would say that because even in our standard development system houses, I noticed, I watched how do this, I got started to do it, build a rapport with the neighbor. So we, we, we have a house saying the 2400 block of Orleans Street, looking at the neighbors on each side, and you say, hey, introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm Mr. Davis, I'm Mr. Scott Hunt, we're going to be working on this house. Those folks kind of look out for them, they're happy that that house is next to them is being renovated. They don't want yeah. that house to be empty. They don't want, you know, the potential for somebody to jump or, you know, the vagrancy or the squatting or whatever, whatever the case may be right. um, that could potentially go on in that property, even, even the hazards, like, right? yeah. in terms of maybe somebody set a fire or, or they were thinking. So it's it's interesting, you know, um, when I watch people support us, call us when activity doesn't look um, kosher or in and around our property, um, call us. Um, or say, hey, you know, you want to use our electric or use your water, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a property that we don't have water yet, mm -hmm. um, all of those things. I mean, it's just, it runs the answers. And so I think that's a blessing in a sense. That's a smaller scale of what you're talking about, but I think it's, it's just as important because the relationship of what we're doing. Um, and, you know, I've, you know, we've met some good people, you know, I mean, just some really good people yeah. who um, own their homes who are just quite satisfied with their neighborhood. But you know, we'd love to see those those those, those lights on the neighborhood, those blemishes on those houses. You know, that that is, is there anything that you would like our audience to understand or know about working in the city that we have in touch with the people? Um, I just this has been a great opportunity, and I can't thank you both enough for the invitation. Um, I, I encourage people to visit our website um, and to reach out via email to our neighborhood development officers um, to find out what's happening in those particular areas. Um, we definitely are encouraging investors, developers to consider Baltimore. Baltimore is amazing. It's got a little bit of everything, um, row house, detached, semi-detached, you know, the county feel, the definite urban feel. Um, and I think a lot of people are paying attention. We are excited about that interest, but we want that interest to be solid so that we are building a foundation for this great city to be able to transition into our life. Are you a bit biased when you light up when you talk about Baltimore? I am. I am. I love the city. Okay. Yeah, so, good. Now, I really, it, it, it's interesting. Our name is Charm City, and I think sometimes, you know, with some of the negativity of some of the other things that are reported, um, you know, you know, I know being from Baltimore, and I know, and I actually like the show, but, you know, when I met people out, you know, when I was going to seminary in Philly, you were, oh, why are y'all, y'all lost this chain? It's like, okay, but Philly, you know, you go to West Philly, y'all got y'all issues. Every city has their issues. You go to Chicago, West Side of Chicago, South Side, of course, we, but I think there's those pockets of community that are just, you know, great, as you said, and you talk about neighborhoods, um, and, you know, particularly city living is just a unique way of, of yes. living. And sometimes we'll get the negative piece of what's reported mm -hmm. and people never walk. Just want to, when I was talking the story, you know, I was sharing with Al about when, when we meet people who live in the neighborhoods and, you know, we come in as an investor, we don't necessarily live in that neighborhood. We're not necessarily looking to buy that property. We're looking to renovate that property and sell it or rent it. But thinking about that person is me and my neighborhood, wherever I live, mm -hmm. and valuing them, valuing yeah. them person. So um, I appreciate um, um, you saying that. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy. To, I'm just happy that you're here. So, whatever you need us to do, is, please come back on first of all, and bring yeah. bring the commissioner with you and all the people downtown. Let them talk about this stuff because we really want to try to encourage people to come in and buy some things in Baltimore to try to enhance the neighborhoods and make Baltimore beautiful and get rid of some of the vacant properties in here. So. I think you're a vital part of that. You're very important. And I appreciate you working with me. I mean, you know I love you so. And thanks for the opportunity you've given us. We're gonna to continue to work with you guys. And we'll, we'll see all the input. We'll give you any input we get off this show. And whatever you need us to do to help, just let us know. Awesome, great, thank you. Thank this, you. this one guy called me, don't laugh. He said, when he found out she was coming on, 
She's like, man, tell her I got $10 million. What can I get? I said, that's not that easy. Call us. Yeah, okay, it's a call. I, I, I was telling you it's a process, man. You can't do like that, but yeah. I'll, I'll put, put you in touch with them. Okay, so we'll put the team together for them. And no, I'm just excited to be here. So I'm happy you came on. Thank you so much, yeah. Teresa. I wonder what um, you all are doing for them, the real estate market in Nigeria. Yeah, 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 I want to say I appreciate you two coming on. I think having a city employee from your perspective come and talk about it and talk clearly about some of the issues and challenges. You know, I was glad, and I was glad that Al had the rapport already, mm -hmm. and then now we got our connections yeah, as yeah. we started talking. So I think that's important because, you know, sometimes it puts us against one another, right? Because um, one of the things I want to promote, and I, I don't have an issue of outside investors, but I want to promote people from here, like, hey, get get a problem, get so get, get one or two, yeah. you know, just get a couple, you know, and run them. Because I think as the market's changing, and Al can speak to this, I don't know if you want to want to put his business out there, but Al. We love him. He is a Baltimorean now, but he was a native of Washingtonian. And so when you go to D.C., one of the things you look at, I know people talk about gentrification, but one of the things on the flip side, I got to say, is you hardly see any vacant properties anywhere in Washington now. Um, and so that we can, I, I would like us to, to become, so we don't see vacant properties, not necessarily to gentrify the neighborhood yeah. where people can't afford to live here. So one of the things I'm pushing Come on, man, get a property or two. Yeah. Richard, get a property or two. Yeah. Um, Pan Radio family out here, come on, use yeah, a couple of those dollars and get you something. Hey, um, invest yeah. before this, this market really yeah. shifts. And Because um, uh, once what they call Chocolate City, I don't know if it's Chocolate City anymore. I'm talking about yeah, BC. Yeah. Right. But and, and another thing is, and I want to thank you because it was always a dream of mine to like, I never thought I could own a city block, a whole city block. But you helped our dreams come true. Now we have two of them, and we're going to do our best to best with that property that we got from you guys. So you help dreams come true as well. So I want to thank you It was definitely that. a team, team effort. Yeah, it was definitely your team, team definitely team worked team with us. Good. And I'm glad to know you. And thank you so much for coming on. We got to go. And don't forget you guys, before it's over, just subscribe. Hit the like button and subscribe so we can send you all our podcasts. You can be the first one to see all our podcasts. And go ahead. I'll let you end it, Mel. <laughs> So look, thank you guys for tuning in. Well, first of all, I want to thank uh, our guest, Ms. Teresa Stevens. Yes. We appreciate thank you. you. Thank you for thank coming. You. Um, and um, we look forward to working with your team. And uh, certainly want to shout out to the Ham Radio family, King Richard Good. We appreciate you, sir. Appreciate your lovely sister today. And uh, Ms. Denver. And we just thank you. Thank you, Al, for bringing us on, for, for, for your vision. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. Again, we're on all social media platforms, YouTube, uh, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, The Real Estate Podcast. But if you go to Instagram, it's Estate underscore podcast. Uh, please check us out. Please subscribe. And also, we have the mentoring program. Mentoring program, if you can check us out, go to skymilesllc.com. Uh, we'll, we'll walk you through the whole process. From the rooter to the two, we'll show you how to develop a property, assess a property. Um, we, you, you get access to, to the contractors we have. You'll get access to, to the, the real estate guru, Al Davis, I call him. <laughs> and I'll even drive you around if you want to. And please check us out for the Sky Miles program. LLC. Sky Miles LLC. Thank you, guys. Peace. We'll see y'all next What's time. up, family? My name is Melvin Dickens. And I'm Al Davis. And we're bringing to you the Real Estate Podcast. Thank you, first of all, to all of our subscribers who watched us on our live. We just did a live show with Ms. Teresa Stevens, the Department of City Department of Housing and Community Development Division. We had an awesome show. Great information. Please tune in. Tune in every Monday at 6 p.m. on Ham Radio. Download the Ham Radio app every Monday at 6 p.m. Our podcast plays there, hamradio.org. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Real Estate Podcast.